Welcome to Strangest Species, episode number six. Again, welcome. I'm your host, Mike Davis, here with the lovely Ethne Davis. Hello, hello. How are you doing tonight? Good. All right. I think that's your answer every time. Well. Good. I mean, I am good. Well, that's good. That's a uh, appropriate answer then. So for anyone new listening, um, welcome. For those who have listened in the past, welcome back. Um, it's exciting. We've had some new listeners all the way from the land down under in Australia this week. We've had some from India, quite a few from Canada. We're on the West Coast, and we're starting to see lots of little cities pop up on the East Coast, too. So it's fun. And the Midwest. Um, so yeah, it's kind of fun to see it growing. Mm-hmm. So quick reminder for anyone who's new, I guess if you're new, it's not a reminder actually, but quick uh, tip for anyone who's new. Uh, every week we come in with a new episode talking about some strange thing that us humans do, and Ethne has no idea what it is we're going to talk about. Not a clue. So her reactions are just as live and raw as anyone who is listening, and that's what makes it fun. And a little bit scary. And a little scary. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Opening question for you here. Have you ever snuck in somewhere, but specifically, well, snuck into a place that was specifically forbidden because it was not safe for you to sneak into? So I'm not talking like, you know, sneaked into a movie or... Right. Um, I mean, I guess yes, but I'm I'm pretty much a scaredy cat for anyone who's listened before you know this. But there's like, on my parents' property... Down the train tracks about a couple miles on the left-hand side, there's like this creepy abandoned shed that had like a... It's a schoolhouse, isn't it? I don't know. I, I really... I mean, it had like a basement level mm-hmm. and just all sorts of animal stuff. In, and I have been in there and we actually did as like a bunch of teenagers go down in that basement and it was terrifying. And did you go in at night? No, but like the the floorboards weren't strong enough. So like... We very easily could have fallen through and someone's foot, like, there was already a board that had been, what's the word, decomposing, that they did just their they foot. Rotted. Mm-hmm. Their foot slipped through, but, like, no one got hurt, hurt, but it's just, mm-hmm. Other than that, I, mm-mm, I'm pretty, my sister's gone on the roof of a school. I remember that. definitely shouldn't do, but, no, I really think. Can't think of anything, huh? Did you know that I have been in the basement of that same building? Without me? Yeah. I mean, I feel like you said you went, but I don't know all the details. Yeah. Were there still stairs there? Or like some sort of ladder thing? Or how did you get down there? Yeah. It was like, a, so this is an old, um, I was told it was an old schoolhouse. It's a one room something. I mean, I'm sure, was my dad your source? Yeah. Yeah, then I'm sure he's right. I honestly had never known that when I went. This is, I mean, 15 years later that you went down and I'm impressed. Oh, at least, yeah. Maybe more that the stairs are still there. Yeah, but you had to climb like three or four stairs to get onto the main floor. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, there was a... There all there like was a hatch. Sorts of, yeah, like a hatch. That That's a good word. And mm-hmm. then there was like a quasi all stair sorts of poop, ladder thing. Like that, bird poops. and don't remember poop. Like dried up. I don't know. It's creepy. I took one of our sons with us and he was like... I don't know. How old did he know? He's probably like nine at the time. Did he go in the basement too? He was pumped. Oh, gosh. He thought it was the greatest thing ever. Gross. Not yeah. for me. Mm-mm. But I kept thinking, two weeks in a row here with the Blair Witch reference. That's what totally reminded me of. Oh, remember those little abandoned houses up at Medellin Falls too? Oh, yeah, yeah. We kind of probably shouldn't have gone in those. But we didn't have to break in. We didn't have to break in, I mean, but I don't think they down. were safe, per se. Well, they weren't safe. They were definitely collapsing. Yeah. Yes. We did have to walk down an abandoned railroad for a long time to get, to, get to, to them. Yeah. So, but really, I like to just, you know, yeah. see them from afar, take pictures in front of them, as far as creepy buildings and abandoned buildings. Yeah. I was thinking about the same question. I can't think of anywhere that I've broken into that was specifically because it wasn't safe, like you're supposed to keep out. Um, I am not one who likes to be places I'm not supposed to be. So I'm not a big fan of sneaking into anywhere that I'm not supposed to be. But you're very intrigued by sneaking into like abandoned factories and Only all that kind of stuff. stuff. But, there's secu- but there's security oftentimes, per- you know, like sure. making sure that sure. you're all sorts of shenanigans. I can remember one time as a kid in San Antonio, and I don't think we had a break in anywhere, 
there was this big giant, and I'm sure I am not remembering this at all correctly, but there was a big giant um, undeveloped area next to our, our community. And I, they must have been getting ready to develop it because there was tons and tons of building materials there and just all of these super long, huge pipes. And I do remember my buddies and I um, going there and it was like a little boy's dream jungle, you know, jungle gym, like climbing through all these super long pipes and <laughs> playing on them and in them. Um, but yeah, I can't think of anything too specific. But today we're going to talk about somewhere that the only way you can go there is by illegally, well, we not really can't really break in because it's an island. But the only way you can go there is by illegally, um, I don't know what that word is, going onto the island. Illegally traveling to said island. Hmm, interesting. This island is called the North Sentinel Island. Have you ever heard of North Sentinel Island? Uh, no. I had not either, so don't feel bad. Okay. So it is an island located in the Bay of Bengal, so between India and Thailand. Interesting. Yep. It is about three and a half miles by five miles. So uh, pretty tiny. Pretty tiny. Decent... About the size of Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is a tropical paradise. Like if you envision... The small little three and a half by five mile island in the middle of the sea, um, completely surrounded with coral reef all the way around and beautiful beaches and just lush, lush jungle. So lush and thick that you cannot see anything in the island from the air. Like if you were to fly over in a helicopter, you just you just see the canopies of the trees. Why? Why is it illegal? Well... We're going to talk about that. Okay. So weird. Yeah. So um, the main reason it's illegal is because it is home to one of the last um, tribes that has never been contacted by the outside world. Mm. And saying never been contacted is not true because they've been contacted many times, but they still... Refuse to accept anything. They refuse to accept anything, and they have no idea that the rest of us exist or what is happening in the real world. Well, not the real world, but our world. uh, Can you just geographically, can they visibly see any other land from? Okay. So if you were on the beach of this island, looking out at the sea, there's as far as you can see, there's just sea. There is a large island to the east of them. That is not very far, but I do not believe that they can, that see, they can see it. Why do you think they have no desire to explore it? Like to e- to even see if there's other things out there to see. Oh, we're going to talk. Okay, well, let's do this. So the people on North Sentinel Island have been named the Sentinelese people. That makes sense. Go figure. I mean, <laughs> logical. And they range somewhere between like 100 and 500 people. But it's really hard to get an estimate because um, if you go on the island, you are going to die. They will kill you? They are very hostile. Wow. So they're very incestual too. Um, Or is that enough people to... Yeah, that was actually... So I have a degree in biology. That was the very first thought I had was... um, Yeah. How do you... Genetics and... Is there a big enough pool here? <laughs> yes, to kind of spread out the genes. Yeah, but apparently there, I mean, there is because they're there. and Or maybe that's why they're so hostile. Maybe. I'm just kidding. I have no idea. But uh, from the limited bit that we're going to talk about that they have had contact, uh, inbreeding and the things that come along with that don't seem to be a problem. Evident. But I mean, how do you really know? Because if they're so hostile, no one's ever really... Known. It's true. Okay. I the don't know. Sentinel- Sentinel- Sentinelese. Sentinelese. It's going to be a, oof, not a good one for me to try to say over and over. Yeah, let's just call them like the There's centies. times where I call them the islanders. Yeah. Because. Let's short Sentinelese to centies. The centies? For the rest of the show. Okay. Because otherwise your, your tongue's going to get all in knots. Yeah. This is true. I'm not good with hard words. No. <laughs> so. Okay, perfect. 
Um, but it's really fascinating if you think, and we'll get kind of into their, the contact we've had with them, but it's a fascinating, um, thought just to, to have that life for them today in 2023 is the same for life that they had in 1920 or 1820 or 1520. Do we know how long they've been there? We don't. Okay. It just seems like surreal. Yeah. Yeah. Like not really, you know, for within real. a, you know, I don't know how far, let's say a half an hour plane ride, you know, you've got every modern technology amenity. I mean, of course they don't have electricity. No. They don't have, no. they have to have fresh water. Yeah. There must be a water source on a the water island source somewhere. on the island. Hmm. And there's got to be obviously a, a food source. I mean, enough. Sort. Yeah. Food to support life. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. So we're going to go back to the year 1867. Okay. This is the first recorded time that people have come across the Senties. The Senties. Okay. Yeah. Now, who knows how long they've actually been there. Right. But there was an Indian merchant ship <clears throat> that crashed on the shore of North Sentinel Island in 1867. And there were 106 crew members who crashed uh, kind of on the north side on a, or on the west side um, on a reef. Um, so they made it to shore. And they just hung out there for three days. And they kind of were like, hey, we crashed. At least we crashed in paradise. You know, it's beautiful. And we got a nice beach. And we can just kind of rest. And, and uh, for three days, nothing happened to them. But then, all of a sudden, um, arrows and spears started to come flying out from up on these cliffs, and uh, they got attacked. They got ambushed. And luckily, they were able to kind of fight off the senties um, using whatever they could find on the beach, throwing rocks, um, sticks. And they probably only survived, in my opinion, my guess, is because there were 106 of them. Yeah. Well, and also I, I'm thinking it probably took the, the Senties, um three days to even figure out that maybe they were there, you know, because otherwise, why would they wait for three days? I have some, flo- or some, oh, some thoughts. Some thoughts on that. Okay. Uh, I would assume they, they knew earlier than that. Like a false sense of security. They were- maybe back then they weren't as hostile. Okay. Like maybe they were just kind of playing their time. Like, hey, what there's some people do? here. Let's see if okay. they leave. And then after a while, they're like, eh, they're still here. What Let's go kill them. What language do they speak? I don't know. Whoa. There actually was a um, an account that they one of the guys talks about the the noises they were making, but I didn't write it down. Is it kind of like catchy or kachika? Have you ever heard the, like, click? Sure. Like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, like when they, I don't when know. you say noises, is it? I kind didn't of... hear them. Oh, it you kind didn't. of was like written out kind of the noises. Mm, yeah. It's very interesting and so fascinating, I feel Yeah. Like. And so these guys survived that attack and eventually within, you know, a few days they were rescued by a, a, another British ship who would come to get them. Oh, so, so they made it off they alive. They made it off alive. Like to tell about it. To tell about it. And now you've got um the British empire who knows about this Island because this is at the time when India is part of Britain and I, you know, right. They definitely should not have let those people leave. (laughs) And so, um, the crew that that's rescued gives this report of this wild, crazy natives who attacked them. And, uh, so it's not for another 13 years, but in 1880, the British go back with a formal expedition to explore the island, to figure out who these people are, what's going on. And they land and they search the island for four days and never come across a single person. What? Now they find villages that look like they've been freshly abandoned, but they don't find any people. They're probably like in these bunkers in the ground or something that like... I don't even know. Hiding the trees. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah. obviously they're, they're doing a good job staying away from the British. And um, so finally, after four days, they find an old couple and four children. And those are the only people they can find on the island. And so what do you think they did with them? Tried to talk to them? Well, I'm sure they did that. 
but I mean, did they take them? They took them. Oh, that's bad. That's probably Back what made them hostile for scientific studies. Oh no! Why would are these like the sacrifices? Like, okay. Yeah, I thought that too. Like. You are the ones that are going to go like, okay, so that the some whole old people village can and be... The four really annoying kids. Send them out there. <laughs> They're the ones that get <laughs> yeah. to go out there. And so they take them back to um, this other island right next to... I can't think what it's called right now. Sento. Right next to North Sentinel Island, the big island to the to the east of them. Oh, you can't think of that name I can't think of that name. Oh, I... Um, what country is that? Do you even know? Nowadays, that? it is part of India. This close island. Yeah. So is, but the Sentinel Island is part of India. Today it is part today. of, so, wait, we'll, I mean, we'll get all to there. Sorry, I'm jumping. No, you're fine. I just don't know. Uh, officially, yes, it is part of India. The Sentinelese people have no idea what India is. Right. They don't. They are, you know, citizens of said country. Right. But yes, the rest of us consider it part of India. And they don't look Indian. Are they like truly n- like Native American, like loincloths and or not not mm, like natives, like the Aborigines, like truly just no yeah. clothes, like yeah. they just. So they're black, which I found fascinating. Oh, so, so not... they're very African looking. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and yes, they. I don't know if we're gonna, if I wrote it down if we're gonna talk about it. I think I think I did. Um but now's as good enough point as any to talk about it. They do wear loincloths. Okay. And again, totally off topic. Not at all what about it has nothing to do with the island. But kind of again going back to a um genetics slash human evolution slash biology. I find it so fascinating that even these super primitive people, for whatever reason, cover their genitals. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was wondering is, is like, are they at least, I don't know, it just, like, like why, how developed are they? So, in yes, their... it is 100% like you would think of an Aboriginal yes. tribe or... Okay, my grandparents used to live in Australia, um, A so. primitive African tribe or... Right. Okay, cool. But it's just this fascinating anthropologic thought, like, what is it in human nature like on TV. Well, they're sensitive spaces. It's the no-no square, right? So it's like you want to keep it protected from being, you know, scratched or poked at or <laughs> as exactly. you're walking through the jungle. Yeah. Don't want anything poked at. Right? right or like that. some weird pokey bush that you walk by. So I think even just... For protective purposes. For protective purposes, yes. I can see. Maybe not as... Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, I thought it was fascinating. That is fascinating. So um, they bring these six... Um, Sentinelese back to with them to the mainland, and um, again for scientific purposes. Now they don't torture them; they don't do anything like that. They well, just, that's good. Yeah, they just want to kind of figure out who these people are. But what do you think happens to all six of them almost immediately upon getting to the mainland? I mean, I, the way you're asking me the question, I'm going to say maybe they die. Not but- necessarily, that, but they all get sick instantaneously. Oh, because their immune systems yeah, they just have, have no, no... Yeah. You know, this is all foreign to them. Right. They can't talk. Like they can't... I mean, they can talk, but they can't communicate. They can't with, communicate they with anyone other, else, obviously. but they can talk right. to each other. So they can't communicate. They s- instantly get sick because of these foreign diseases and viruses and bacteria that they've never been exposed to. And can you imagine, even in the late 1800s, the amount of modernization. Like they're probably just shocked. I mean, it's like being abducted by aliens. Yeah. Truly like shell shocked. Just yeah. like, I have no, I don't understand what's happening. You're probing me. <laughs> You're sticking needles in me to what t- take I my see. blood. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, I'm sure was terrifying and crazy. And so, um, pretty quickly after getting sick, the elderly couple dies. Like the immune system just can't handle whatever disease they get. But kids are so adaptive and their immune systems are so incredible. I wonder, did they live to then maybe even learn how to communicate? Did they take them back? Yeah, so they didn't hold on to them for very long. Okay. So this is a, a direct quote from the leader of the British expedition. He says, 
They, speaking of the Centelese, had a pu- peculiarly idiotic expression of countenance and manner of expression. Like End just, quote. Like, well, obviously. Like a deer in headlights. <laughs> yeah. That's... Like you being abducted on an alien spaceship. Like that's you're a... going to have a dumbfounded look on your face. So, um, I'm not sure what else they were supposed to look like. But he also went on to say, the mission was not a success. We cannot be said to have done anything more than increase their general terror of and hostility to all outsiders. It would have been better to have left the Islanders alone. Did they return the children? So they take the four back. They drop them off with a bunch of presents. So you take them a bunch of food, linens, whatever. And they take them back and they drop them back off on the island. And they leave. And that's the last time there's any contact that we know of for about 15 years. Hmm. So hypothesis here. This is just totally me making this up. These kids are back. They have all these weird presents. They've seen all this crazy stuff. The elderly couple, they, you know, they died. So they come back. So when the British merchant ship crashed the first time, they didn't attack them right away. They were kind of withdrawn. This time when the British came, they hid in the forest and never attacked them. From now on, we're going to see every time you get close to the island, you're dead instantly. Right, because of probably so I wonder that if experience. It, yeah, if, yeah, if either these children came back and expressed stories of, you're not going to believe what it's like out there. These guys aren't our friends, you know. They stuck all these needles in us to try to whatever, they draw did whatever, blood, or whoever knows what they did. leeches on it, whatever they did. No, I mean. It was the late 1800s. I guess that's true. <laughs> Who knows what they did? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the old people that went with this, they died instantly from some bad magic, some bad disease, some bad, who knows right. what. And maybe at that point they were like, never again. No one's ever stepping foot on this island. Like they're on, they're dead. Or maybe they brought disease back with them and it killed off half the population. And they said, never again is someone stepping foot on this island. Yeah, I bet you they did. You know? So yeah. we don't okay. know. Right. But we do know from now on, death. they go you. from like, Kind of hostile to really hostile. Have you ever seen that movie, Death Becomes Her? I have. The only I thing I remember total. is her head turning yeah. all the way around. Remember Literally. Remember hole, like in one of them stomachs. Oh, yeah, and like her chest or abdomen. I remember watching it when I was like eight years old and liking it, but I haven't. Goldie <laughs> Hawn, right? I don't even know, but. And you watch that like, again. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Anywho, not right. about this show, but <laughs> side note. Side note. Um, So 1896. So that was in. 1880, that the expedition happened. So now we jump to 1896. Okay. There's a escaped prison convict from Thailand mm. who escapes, gets on a raft, hits the open waters. And dies when he lands on the island. Or she, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully. drifts onto North Sentinel Island. And you guessed it. When a search party goes looking for the inmate, they find a slit throat on the island and problem solved. Okay. So that's another question I have. So they know how to make knives. They do. Or they have the ability. They have arrows. Okay. Okay. So they've got to have enough resources on this island, which is pretty incredible. It is. Um, I didn't write about this. I didn't put it in my notes. There is a point which another ship. um, No, I didn't write about it. Uh, I did write about it. Sorry. So okay. we'll we'll get so there. We'll get there. Okay. Sorry. I'm keep so they jumping. can. Yeah, they have some kind of weapon. Now, who knows? what I mean, you could use a sharp shell. You could use. I guess that's true. Wood. Yeah. There's lots of things you could slit a man's throat with. Go uh, on. I actually think it'd be harder than we think it is without like a just a really sharp knife. Mm, you could have a sharp shell. A yeah, conch. A shell could work. I can picture like sharks too. Kind of like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I just feel like that would be gruesome and hard to do. But yeah, maybe it was. Anyway, all doesn't right. say it was a clean slit. That's true. <laughs> Pretty gnarly. Okay. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> Sinew and tendons. Okay, and... okay, okay. Anyways. Um, so that's 1896. Um, now let's fast forward to World War II. Now there's no documentation of this next hypothesis whatsoever. 
So we don't know if any of this is true. This From is, World War II? Right. Okay. This is totally just a uh, a thought which seems probable, but no one knows. And why don't we know? Because the Japanese destroyed all of the documentation about these areas prior to surrender. And why would they destroy them? Like, what's the So that function? we would never know what was going on. <laughs> Oh, they just didn't want evidence. Yeah, oh. same with like when we when Berlin was about to fall. Yeah, when yeah. The Nazis were burning everything. Okay. And, you know, getting rid of the evidence. This just seems like a weird place to care about evidence. Like I don't know that we really. So the Big Island that I can't remember its name right next door. That's in India. Yep. Okay. Um, there's a city there to this day called Port Blair. It's a okay. city of about a hundred thousand people. This is where the captain brought these six. Sent to these people mm-hmm. was to Port Blair. Um, it is well known that during World War II, so the Japanese occupied this big island. Oh, they did. Okay. And um, they killed at least 10% of the pre war population on the island. Oh, wow. And did lots of torture and bad things. And Okay. So maybe that is, they didn't want any. Right. So I get they're it. They're getting rid of all these kind of the evidence of these things. Now, there's no documentation, again, of them ever going to North Sentinel Island, but it's, I mean, just a stone's throw away. So they could very, I and mean, it's not hard to believe that some band of Japanese soldiers made it over and maybe didn't do well themselves or maybe inflicted other issues, you know. But it's another thing that possibly could add to them not liking foreigners right. on their island. Okay. So, jumping ahead now to 1974, there's a documentary called Man in Search of Man. And you can actually go and watch this on YouTube. It's kind of cool. Um, and they go and try to make contact with the North Sentinelese people. Um, and it, they're, it's a documentary for TV, so they're filming all of it. And they, they show up in boats, and they're, they go they land on shore. And they leave gifts of coconuts and knives and linens. And they even leave a pig, a live pig there for them. Um, and all the things you'd ever want to give a tribe that's never been contacted by the outside world. And they're actually, the Sentinelese are filmed for the first time ever. And you can watch them on film and you can see them. And they're waving their bows and arrows and shouting. And they got their little loincloths on. And, and they're like angry like they're saying yeah, yeah, get yeah. away okay. totally okay. and yeah they, they look quite intimidating and uh they start burying the gifts and right away right away they kill the pig they start burying the gifts and they start shooting arrows out of the boat they totally are scared of the disease like something that could be on the pig or stuff that could I think harm their tribe. It I makes truly. Sense. I mean, by I mean that's a good thought. Just in the fact that they're burying it and getting mm-hmm. rid of it instantaneously, like they're just scared. Even though maybe there are wild boars on this island that feed them, I think they're thinking, "Oh well, this pig is from somewhere else that has weird stuff that we don't know about." And so we saw this happen. Well, maybe it's been passed down now because well, I don't know how many years we're talking. But if those kids, you know what I mean. So then they're just. Protecting themselves right away. Yeah, so we're about 90 years later. Oh, yes. But, I mean, generally speaking, in any of these kind of civilizations, I mean, everything's oral tradition, right? Right. So, so I'm sure the oral traditions of that, the, long, that story, and they were just terrified to let any bad, and they probably have no idea why they died. Like maybe the concept of viruses and microorganisms, all that kind of stuff, you know? So they, they were just like, nope, we want nothing yeah. to do with this. It's, I mean, Western medicine didn't figure any of this out until the late 1800s. So I'm sure they, I mean, as far as right. virology and Yeah. So bacteria. that's what I mean is they've got just the way that their actions are is like, they are scared of this stuff. It's not like even curiosity. It's interesting. And it's just, yeah. Like, I, mean, I think I, if it was me, I'd be like, oh, what is this cool thing? You know? You're like the little mermaid. Yeah. Like, look at this stuff. Yeah. Isn't it neat? You'd want your... It don't what does he call everything? Like a, snarf blat? Yeah. You'd want your snarf. Is that the, the, the pipe? Yep. And there's like... Dingle the hopper. F- dingle hopper. The fork. Of. 
But I mean, I would think, or maybe I would like to think that I would be curious. Obviously, they are terrified. Right. It must come from that experience. I mean, I don't know what else. But it makes sense. Does it? Like if some random person tried to, let's say an alien, again, this is the best scenario I can come up with. You know, this totally foreign entity with technology and powers I don't understand. Sure, but you're still human. Like, they're still humans. That's true. Okay, so humans from the future. Okay. With weapons I don't understand. Okay. Come breaking into our house. Like a lightsaber. First thing I'm going to do is grab a weapon and try to defend my oh, kids. You totally. know, like, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these aren't, they aren't being, like, they aren't being violent towards them. Not in this instance, you're right. So, or really not ever. I mean, yes, you could say the abduction of them and taking them and them not knowing could be considered violent, but I That's guess... That's true. No one, unless the Japanese, but we don't know that. And that we don't know for sure. But, but that we know of, you're right, no one's ever gone on and... Yeah. Anyway, it just... fight with them. To me, it seems like they're terrified. That's the only explanation for just yeah. wanting to bury it all right away. But anyway. But one of the crew members actually got injured in this attack. Like the like arrow? In the boat, yeah. And these arrows, they show them, they're like... Six feet long. They're insane. Wow. Yeah. And they shoot. They shoot. Wow. Never heard of a six foot arrow, like a javelin arrow. Yeah. Whoa. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that is sweet. Did he keep it at least? I'm sure someone kept it. Yeah, that's a. So he didn't get shot with it. I don't know how he got injured. They never said. Oh. It wasn't like. Did he know, make it? Yeah. Okay, good. It wasn't like he took it to the heart or anything. But still, I mean, that's a cool thing to keep. Yeah. That's a cool story. I mean, <laughs> if you live. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, so that's 1974. Um, 1981, there's a ship on the way to Australia loaded with farm equipment that wrecks on the northern shore of the island for whatever reason. Wind, or I don't know how ships wreck. But but lucky for them, the water was really high at that time. And where they wrecked on the reef, there was a uh, fairly large expanse of water between them and the shore. So... Even though there were lots of angry Sentinelese people yelling at them and waving their spears and stuff, they couldn't actually attack them. And uh, at the same time, you can't stand your boat forever. I mean, you're going to need provisions and things like that. So sure, but this is this is modern enough. They can radio saying, "Hey, we're shipwrecked. Gotcha. We've run ashore. There's people waving arrows at us. Can someone come pick us up, please? <laughs> Before we all die." Um, I kind of want to go visit. Yeah, maybe you just should. From, just from afar. Yeah. You know, like, are they going to shoot arrows at me now today? Even yep. though it's like 2023? Yep. <laughs> That's so weird. Okay. Uh, it's just weird concept. Like, my brain can't compute that, like... This is modern. Yes. This is right now. It's but, true. But then again, when I went on my, you know, service mission to Guatemala, and I'm seeing these people farming their little fields... Using like a hand plow, I'm like wow, this is, and it's not even that maybe they're not a- aware of what's out there. They just don't have access to get it, or maybe yeah. they really aren't aware. I mean, we were in some pretty rural areas, but it was just flashback in time to like what my grandparents, you know, would mm-hmm. have been doing. So uh, anyway, it's just it's just interesting to think. Like Very. I could get shot at with arrows, you know. You would. Definitely. If let's, you went today. Let's go there. I have no desire to get shot at with six foot arrows. <laughs> just from a distance. I just <laughs> want to see it. Well, you'd have some other issues. Okay. Getting there that we'll get to. Okay. All right. But this crew, who's uh, going back to our story of them being stranded on, on the reef. Far enough away. For... They described the people yelling at them from the cliffs, the Sentinelese, as follows. They described them as well-built frizzied hair and black they were naked except for narrow belts that circled their waists and they were holding spears bows and arrows which they began waving in a manner that seemed altogether not friendly very well said yes (laughs) so um somebody at some point talked about how they had arrows with um iron points on them but they have also been known for like so they these guys came and got picked up, but the ship's still there. If you go to Google Maps, you can still see this ship 
wrecked on the shore. So you wonder if they so went they go onto on, the they've ship stripped, and they've yeah, ah, which again is a fascinating. Again, I always take it back to aliens. You know, like Roswell. Yeah, again, I'm not a, a believer in aliens per se, but just this concept of okay, this is crashed alien UFO. Let's go reverse engineer it. Let's use the stuff in it. Let's figure out what it is. Or it's just human nature to go and like pilfer and salvage to survive and to see, but not at any threat. But you would think that actually they would be scared to do that because of... It, if I mean, our if, other hypothesis If is the correct. other hypothesis is correct. Otherwise, why would they be burying it? I mean, I feel like maybe they just... In, Unless it's a religious thing, a cultural right, thing, Right, or maybe in front thing. of them they make it seem like they don't care, and then later on... They go back and get it. Yeah. I don't know. They've got like this warehouse, this Costco on there, all the All stuff the gifts they've that they've been given. And, yeah. Like, being, we're here, we're nice. We just want to give you gifts and talk to you or watch you, because that would be so interesting. Yeah. I mean, even some of my grandma's stories of being with Aborigines was so neat, like just so interesting. So, I mean, I don't know. Okay. All right. So they, so they got, they are fine. using iron. Yeah. So somehow. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but again, obviously they're not refining it themselves. But or... the ship is like survived that long. Just, I guess maybe. Yeah. When was that that long ago? I know, but still, I think the salt water and like the waves and I don't know. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So there's a uh, guy, I don't know what he was, anthropologist, something, that uh, his name is T.N. Pandit. Pandit. It's an Indian name. I don't know how to pronounce it. But uh, so he had been going and dropping coconuts and other gifts off on the island every single month since 1967. Interesting. Now, he wasn't going on the island. I mean, maybe he was running up on shore and dropping him and running him back off, you know, but it wasn't like hanging out. Um, so he did this for 24 years. That's every nice, month. That's a nice guy. Trying to establish contact with, and I think he worked for the Indian government, um, but trying to establish contact with the, the Sentinelese people. And he was usually met with hostility and usually a, a desire to fill him full of arrows. But he just kept going back, going back, going back. And in January of 1991, he arrived like normal. And he was met by a young Sentinelese man who raised an arrow at him. But a woman came running over on the beach and pushed the bow and arrow down. And then the young man buried the weapons in the sand. And about 12 Sentinelese rushed into the water to greet the men. They gave out five bags of coconuts, and this is the first known peaceful contact with the tribe ever. So I wonder if that woman had been watching this man delivering this stuff every month for however many years that had been at this point. And when he was confronted, and she was trying to say like, no, no, I mean, they're nice and put the bows down. Yeah, no. It makes me wonder if women are like the elders in the mm. tribe or the group or whatever, the, you know. Yeah, however they, yeah, maybe so. You know, that she was like this matriarch. Right. Oh, that's really cool. But it's interesting, too, that he buries the weapon, which is the same thing they do with the gifts. So it makes me yeah. think there's some cultural there's significance, some too. significance with that. Huh? So that. So anyways, and they all run on the water. And again, this is documented. You can watch it. They welcome the coconuts. They welcome the coconuts. Um, these men kind of jump off their their little rafts boats that they're in um and they're all in the water together at one point the sentinelese actually get into their little dinghies and just start taking the coconuts um, maybe they were having like a drought that year and they're like you know what maybe. i don't care about this That's you true. know interaction I, we just need maybe this they had food. A bad coconut year yeah <laughs> um and so he comes back two weeks later and uh and there comes a, a point, and, and so yeah, they have their main ships, they come in, and then they take these little dinghies from the main ship to the island. And at some point, um, Pandit is separated. He realizes he's the only one on this boat with the Sentinelese, and everyone else is on the main ship. On the main ship, or traveling to and from the main ship, and he's alone. And everything's going fine, like it did the last time, when all of a sudden one of them pulls out a knife 
and motions as if, as if he's going to cut out his heart. Oof. And so... That's terrifying. Yep. So things change real fast on him. And Pandit, his thought, he goes on to say, he survives. He goes on to think his thought was that the Sentinelese were thinking, oh, they're going to leave him here on the island. Like, he's the only one left. They've all gone back to the ship. Mm. And it was like, no, no, you're not. You're not staying. You're not staying. Like, I'm going to kill you then if you think you're staying. Right. Um, so the crew comes back. They get him. Everything's okay. Okay. He retires a year later. And I think it's a forced retirement. Like, it's just the way it works. He's at an age now where right. he's forced to retire. You worked your 20 years. You get your pension. And uh, that was the end of that relationship. That's kind of sad. Yeah. Because they'd made inroads in more bit. than anyone else. Yeah. Um, and so 2004 comes along. We have a massive, massive, massive earthquake in the Indian Ocean that causes the worst tsunami in recorded history. I don't remember the devastates. Large, large. I mean, this is, yes, very um, familiar in my brain. Large chunks of that part of the world kills hundreds so of thousands many, of people. Yeah. So the Indian government sends a helicopter to fly over North Sentinel Island to see, did these people survive? Is you it know? flattened? Yeah. yeah. And miraculously, they seem to be doing just fine. <laughs> like nothing's even happened. And they're throwing rocks and shooting arrows at the helicopter and... Telling them to get the heck out of there. All right. So they survived just fine, it seems like. I wonder if the like pattern in the ocean out there just kind of avoids yeah. this special place. Or they just know things. Or know? maybe they just know things. Just I swear these... they're in the ground. I'm serious. Maybe. Like bunkers, you know? Underground civilization. Well, just they can hide themselves almost completely. Like or hobbits. Yes. Yeah, like sure, hobbits, if we want to look <laughs> at it that way. Yeah. Um, so anyways. So they're back to being hostile. Okay. So 2006, we got two fishermen. They're out fishing. Seems like a really weird place to be fishing. Well, I mean, it's the Bay of Bengal. I mean, I guess. fishermen out there. I know, but I mean, it's kind of far out there, right? Well, they're not at North Sentinel Island. Okay. They're just out fishing. Okay. And they get really drunk. Mm. So they decide to anchor for the night. And so you do what every good fisherman does. You tie a rock on a rope and you drop it as your anchor. Is that what every good fisherman does? I think so. I think my face is saying, mm, <laughs> I don't think so. Well, lo and behold, the rock comes untied. No. And while they're passed out, they drift all the way. And they drift to North Sentinel Island and other fishermen see them and they try to yell at them and tell them like, Hey, that's the Island where people die if they go on, but they're too drunk. They're too passed out. They aren't responding. And, uh, Guess what happens to them? I mean, I'm guessing they die. They died. Yeah. How did they die? They were killed. But like, in what form? I don't know. Oh, okay. But the Sentinelese decided to put their bodies on some poles like scarecrows and face them towards the ocean. Kind of like a warning. This is what happens Mm -hmm. when you come to our island. Like, don't come. This is in 2006. Jeez, this is very... uh... So, we were married then. So, not too... Yeah, this is getting more modern. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. Yep. So, after this, the Indian government places a five-kilometer exclusion zone all around the island, making it illegal to go within five kilometers of the island. And it is patrolled by the Indian, Indian government Coast Guard. What? Yeah. It's a big job. They've decided, you know what? These people are doing their thing. We're going to totally just let them do their thing. <laughs> no. And no one is allowed to go anywhere near them. But it's not like even the fishermen tried. You know what I'm no. saying? Like, I feel like for the most part... So I think it's a... It's people- a it's a win-win. Win. Right. You know, we're going to leave them alone, and we're going to try to keep everyone else alive and safe. Yeah. They don't want you there. We don't want you messing with them. No one's allowed to go. <laughs> That's so interesting. Okay. And so there's this five-mile exclusion zone. Fast forward 2018. Okay. Remember that year? I mean, yeah. Nothing special, but yeah. It's five years ago. Yeah. Um, There is a young American named John... Smith. No. Cho. Chow. C H A U. Chow. I don't know. Chow. Yeah. Chow. I don't know. Um who born and raised in the States, um, comes from a good home, decides that he wants to be the one to take the Lord's good word 
to the Sentinelese people. Oh, like it feels like this is his mission. It's, it's so random. Yeah. And so, <laughs> uh, he's very well versed in the history of the people and their hostilities. Just from his own research, mm-hmm. maybe. Okay. Like this is not someone who naively decided, Oh, there's an Island over here. I'm going to go talk to these folks. He knows perfectly well what he's getting himself into. He thinks that he could be the one that is well received, kind of like me. He feels like it's his calling. I feel like it's, yeah. I'm going to go see them and they're going to like me. Well, I can't think of any females who are any of these stories. So maybe you would be well received. Yeah. I mean, I just, it just needs to be a woman. There you go. Okay. So he flies over to the said big island that I can never remember the name of. Right. And he um, takes a boat or get some. Well, he has to find get permission. Some, but no, no permission. Well, you would have to get permission because of the doesn't. five mile or yeah. five kilometer, whatever it was. So he meter. chums up with some Indian fishermen who agree to smuggle him onto the <laughs> island, or not onto the island, but close enough that, that he, can he can kayak swim in or ki- oh, wow. into the island. Yeah, but they have to do it in the dead of night because the patrols and they have to still yeah he has to still you know um they have to make it look like they're doing their normal fishing patterns and you know all this stuff so um long story short because it's illegal they're not going with him and because they know they're probably gonna die so he goes and he rose up to the island super early in the morning with two big fish This is his peace offering that he's bringing. And he's immediately met by two locals with arrows. And so he drops the fish and he paddles like crazy and gets out of there. And he survives. Attempt one. Two. Proselyte to the North Central East. And we know this because he keeps pretty elaborate journals. So he talks about, yeah, I went, I got scared, took off, but I'm going to go back tomorrow and try again. Where is he going for the He's one? going back to this ship. They pick him up somewhere. Oh, okay. Wherever his fishermen These buddies fishermen are. friends. Okay. Yeah. So second time, he paddles up to shore, and this time he gets close enough to a hut that he can hear them hollering, but I don't think they know he's there yet. And so a few sentinels come out, They find him and they shout at him. So he tries to mimic what they're saying and tries to shout the same things back at them. Right. The same sounds Sounds. he hears. Okay. To which they just laugh hysterically. Which I would too. I mean, I even attempted to try some of those languages I've heard. So he decides he'll start singing some, some worship songs. Maybe that's the kit, the, the trick. But what do you think? I think they're going to get mad at him and chase him away. So a woman and a child approach him and they each have a bow and arrow and they're drawn pointing at him, (laughs) which is fascinating that it's a child and a woman. I don't know why I find that fascinating. I I think that's fascinating too. And so he tries telling them like, no, no, no bows. Like bows are not needed here. And he's got his Bible in his hand. And while he's talking to them, a third or a second child, a third person kind of sneaks up between them. And point blank range fires an arrow at him. And guess what happens? He misses it. Hits his Bible. Whoa. Arrow to the Bible. Deliberately or that was an accident? I think it was an accident and he got super lucky. So he's got this Bible in his hand with an arrow in it, saves his life, takes off, swims almost a mile (laughs) back to the ship to get away. Now, at this point, you might want to think, this is a pretty cool story to tell. I don't think they want me here. I should probably call it a day. Yeah, but he's feeling it. He is feeling it. (laughs) He even writes in his journal, I don't want to die, but if that's what the good Lord wants, then that's what I'll, I'll do. So he goes back for a third attempt. We know nothing about what happens other than he never comes back. Obviously, right? If we know right. nothing about what happens, then he didn't. We know he dies. Um, and uh, and that's the end. So, present day, 2023, like we talked about earlier, it's technically part of India, 
but the Indian government treats them as a completely independent and sovereign area. Um, and again, they protect them from outsiders. Um, They've never come to this mutual agree- agreement that they want this protection per se, but they just don't want other people to be dying, essentially, is what the Indian government is doing. Correct. Right? Because, I mean, it's like no one's ever talked to them to say, like, we just don't want anyone bugging us. It's like they're just... I mean, I think their actions speak for themselves. They do, but... <laughs> for sure. <laughs> You're right. No, there's no there's no treaty. There's no Right. Accord. So interesting. Yeah. But it's got to be fascinating as the rest of civilization, you know, builds up around you. Like you've got to see planes flying overhead. Oh, you've yeah. got to see large vessels on the horizon, like, you know, shipping vessels. Yeah. You would just imagine that at least one of these people are like, I want more. I want to know what's out there. I see these airplanes. I see these ships. Like, I want to get off this island. Where's Moana? Where? <laughs> no, I'm, but I'm serious. Like, I can't imagine that there's not one person in this whole tribe or group of people that have that. You're such a child of the Little Mermaid era. Oh, stop it. Just stop. I mean, it was like my favorite movie. I used to swim like a mermaid, but that has nothing to do with it. I mean, don't you think it's weird? I mean, if you're lo- anywhere, you know, if you... Yeah, I think that, I think you're right. I think it's not like human, human nature, nature yeah. to always be looking um, outside of your domain. I mean, you know, right, like, exactly. Or not even outside of your domain, but like... To explore, to see what else there is. I just think of... I've heard of these weird places. They're like complexes and you live all in these complexes and that's all you kind of know is all these people in these complex I don't know much about it but I've heard and where are these complexes I don't know are they in Texas or I don't even know but I'm just saying like these groups of people that kind of maybe like cultish people like and then there's people that are in there that are like yeah this is weird like innately they just know like there's more out there or this isn't necessarily considered healthy or safe. I mean, I just feel like if they're seeing things like airplanes and that they've got to know at least one of them has to have this desire to be like curious, even just curiosity. Yeah. Not even that what they're doing is wrong or, or different, but just this, this innate desire to know more. I feel like that's a part of human to be free. Not Spread to, your wings and fly, man. Just to know more. I mean, think of like all these people with these amazing minds that have discovered all the things. Peanut butter. Peanut butter, the speed of light, gravity, the light bulb. I mean, I I feel like there's this innate humanness about wanting to know more and gain knowledge. And I just can't imagine that there's not one person of the Sentis, Sentinels. Sentinelese. Sentinelese. Which is definitely not what they call themselves. Well, they don't even know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that will have that desire. Yeah. Maybe maybe some have made it to the mainland and they just, I don't even know. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe over time people have and then they died instantly of diseases. Maybe. Not instantly, but you know what I'm saying. Very quickly, yeah. Or maybe some have attempted and then, I mean... But if they don't, if they can't communicate and there's no known language that anyone knows, I mean, someone who might find them if they did make it to the mainland are kind of like, well, maybe, maybe this person's nonverbal. Maybe like they have no explanation. Maybe. That's true. I mean, they had to have gotten there at some point in some way. That's exactly what I'm thinking. But and they also, don't seem to be seafaring people. You know, you don't see ships. You don't see canoes. You don't see. How do they get there? Well, obviously at one point thousands of millions hundreds of whatever they got there you know so interesting but and also just this description of that one company where you know their skin's very very dark and they have frizzy hair it's just so interesting because of the location where they're at right they definitely don't look like other peoples of that area right which is also very fascinating and whether that is a um 
I don't even know the right word is an anthropologic thing. You know, they came from somewhere in Africa and mm-hmm. they got there somehow, or if it's more of a, a biological, this is just the way they have evolved over time. A- the, from, an adaptation to right from their geography and climate, and you I mean, know. part of me wonders if maybe early, earlier on, you know, like this is kind of you've been exiled. This is this is where you go. This is where the, whoever the people were we're talking. Before, you know, for, this is kind of where you were put. And then, you know, from there, it that's how they got there. I mean, I don't know. It just seems so mm, mysterious. It is mysterious. It's very unique. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and strange. And strange. <laughs> but yeah, it's fascinating. Um, but yeah, as of today, they're still just doing their thing. Right. Just like they were. In the year 1500 or 1900, or I don't know, whenever. I know, it would be so neat if someone could just explore the island. What is it What is it that they build their homes out of? You know, how do they cook food or do they even just eat all, all raw? Do they Are they all 100% vegetarian? Yeah, yeah, what's on there to eat? Like that part is, it's kind of amazing that an, a piece of land that is so accessible, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's that hard to get to. Is that undiscovered? Right. Yeah, it's very interesting. So untouched by time. Right. And well, humanity. And humanity for, well. And culture and right. technology and everything. Yeah. I don't it's know my how many next of those vacation spot. are in the world still. I mean, honestly, it, in the very, very remote, very hard places to, you know, who knows about all the little tiny islands along all the Polynesian place, you mm-hmm. know, I just wonder, like. I feel like there's probably a lot more out there that maybe they're so un av- available to get to that it it makes more sense. This one seems, I mean, if you're going to fall asleep and be drunk enough that you can then crash into right. it, it's and there's it's, a town of a hundred thousand people. Yeah, how not far away? Not far. That's what I'm saying. Is it's like it's so accessible to then be so and primitive. literally, you're just. A, I mean, you're in the bay of the second most populous country in the world. Mm-hmm. I and mean, there's a billion people across, you know, a channel from you. Which again is so I mean, intriguing to like me. The English channel, but right. But you know, in the, there's probably so many remote islands out there that are just untouched because they are so hard to reach. And that makes more sense to me, you know, like mm-hmm. you don't even have the opportunity to know what's out there, but this just seems like, Curiouser and curiouser. Yeah. It's yeah. a bizarre one. All right. So anyways, um, go look it up. Go check out North Sentinel Island. It's pretty fascinating. They said a lot of this stuff's on YouTube. So you can see them shaking their bows and arrows and um, even accepting the, the coconuts from the one expedition. It's too bad that that guy kind of quit or kind of got fired yeah. or hit. Kind of forced fished, into retirement. Yeah, forced into retirement because it would be so neat if there was just a little bit more information. So maybe you'll be the next person to make contact. With their arrows. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe. Okay. So anyways, go uh, share the podcast if you like it. Rate, review it. Um, again, if you want to get in contact with us, strangestspecies at gmail.com is a good way to do it. Also, there's a Facebook page, Stranger Species. Um, and that definitely is the easiest way to get a hold of either one of us. Have a wonderful week, and we will talk to you again next week. Out. Goodbye.